Hello everyone, I'm David. Welcome to today's class. For thousands of years, humans have been searching for the gateway to immortality or eternal life. In various religions, immortality is usually one of the promises of the gods to human beings who worship them or show goodness to others. Scientists, futurists, and philosophers have developed theories on having an immortal human body. Some suggest that human immortality may be achievable in the first half of the 21st century. Others believe that life extension is a more achievable goal in the short term, while immortality still needs much more research. So today, let's dig deep into the prospects for human immortality. There are three things we're going to talk about in today's lesson. First, we'll discuss the search for eternal life. Second, we'll go into prospects for human immortality. And third, we'll look at the debate about technological immortality. Since the beginning of human history, mortals have longed to escape their mortality in the hope of eternal life. In ancient Greek writings, mortals is basically a synonym for men, contrasting them with the envied, ageless immortality of the gods. And China is no exception. The first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang, had everything a mortal man could ever want, wealth, fame, and power. But there was one thing he desired to have above all else, immortality. His greatest ambition was to become immortal or die trying. He consulted alchemists to help him find the secret. In China, the alchemist's job was to create a magic medicine that could cure any disease and stop the aging process. Qin Shi Huang's alchemists did end up creating elixirs of immortality they thought would work. The main ingredient in these elixirs was mercury. They thought that the uniqueness of mercury could be the key to eternal life. The emperor gladly and religiously took the elixir, hoping that it would fulfill his greatest desire. He ended up dying only at the age of 49. If he hadn't taken the elixir, he would most likely have lived longer. Ironically, his quest for immortality led to his death. Ancient China is not the only society focused on achieving immortality. The ancient Egyptians have left behind wonderful artifacts which show the great significance of immortality in their society. They developed a complex set of religious beliefs and used vast material resources in their quest for immortality. In 1550 BC, ancient Egypt acquired great wealth and power. This was followed by an increase in cultural activities which were devoted to the quest for eternal life. For example, the great pyramids, mummies, and some Egyptian rituals are all related to helping the pharaoh achieve his immortality. The tombs of the pharaoh contained boats. It was believed that a deceased pharaoh would descend into the underworld and ride a solar boat to the sun to unite with the sun god Ra. The story is painted on the walls of the tomb. Together, Ra and the deceased pharaoh travel through the underworld. Traveling through the night, Ra and the pharaoh encounter enemies 
that threaten their quest for immortality. But with the help of the gods, Ra and the Pharaoh unite and become one at midnight. Then he is given the strength to overcome anything that remains in his path. This journey is a metaphor for immortality sought by all Egyptians. Today, humans are still searching for immortality, but in a different way. Tech titans are aiming to achieve immortality through science and technology. Larry Ellison, the co-founder of Oracle, is not content with accepting the notion of mortality. He's working together with the Glenn Foundation for Medical Research. Together they put over one million dollars a year toward research for age-related diseases. They are using lab mice to find means to ward off old age. But can these results be replicated in humans? The Russian internet godfather, Dmitry Itzkov, believes that he'll be able to give humans the ability to live forever. By 2045, Itzkov hopes to create technology in which a person's consciousness can be transferred into hologram-like avatars. The idea might not be possible now, but it may be possible in the near future. Google's Sergey Brin is planning on pumping billions of dollars into a partnership with pharmaceutical powerhouse ABBV to cure death. He is working with a mutation of the LRRK2 gene that is associated with a higher risk of Parkinson's disease. He firmly believes the new approach could be transformational. Some people may be skeptical of the ideas these tech titans have. Perhaps they're just too sci-fi to ever be real. So how might scientists actually make someone immortal? What exact methods will be put into practice? One of these methods is using life-extending substances. There are some known natural and artificial chemicals that may increase the life expectancy of a person, such as telomerase. Telomerase is a naturally forming enzyme which helps maintain the protective caps at the ends of chromosomes. But how does it prevent someone from aging? To understand this better, let's first go into why we age. The DNA damage theory of aging states that the main cause of aging is the accumulation of DNA damage. As people grow older, telomerase will become shorter and shorter. If telomerase becomes too short to stay on the ends of chromosomes, the chromosomes will lose some part of its replacing information. Eventually, the chromosomes become so damaged that they die. By boosting our natural levels of telomerase, our chromosomes would remain intact as cells divide, potentially halting the aging process. Researchers at the Spanish National Cancer Center tested this theory on mice. It was found that mice which were genetically engineered to produce 10 times the normal levels of telomerase lived 50% longer. The question remains whether or not this research can be applied to humans. Another method is cryonics. Cryonics is the practice of preserving a deceased body, or sometimes just the brain, so it can be revived in the future. To do this, corpses are stored at very cold temperatures, usually negative 196 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, metabolism and decay are almost completely stopped. 
This can be used for those who believe that life extension technologies will not develop sufficiently within their lifetime. Cryonics would allow deceased individuals to be brought back to life in the future. After cures to the patient's diseases have been discovered and aging is reversible, the individual can be brought back to life. Modern cryonics procedures use a process called vitrification. Rather than freezing the body, it becomes glass-like as it is brought to low temperatures. This process helps reduce the risk of cell damage since ice crystals at low temperatures can damage the structure of cells. So far, cryonics is not very popular since it is very expensive. As of 2014, only about 250 bodies were cryopreserved in the United States, and about 1,500 people had made arrangements for cryopreservation after their legal death. The majority of people are still waiting for this technology to be proven viable and worth the exorbitant cost. But in the future, as scientific methods improve, this could become more mainstream. Even if we could keep our body intact, would we have the same mind if we suddenly woke up 200 years later? While cryonics aims to preserve the body, there is no guarantee of preserving our thoughts and memories. So, would it be possible for our mind to live forever separate from our body? Some futurists say that mind-to-computer uploading is the way to achieve immortality. An individual's habits and memories can be uploaded via direct mind-computer interface. This means the individual's memory may be loaded into a computer or even a new body. Futurists like Ray Kurzweil have proposed that it will someday be possible to upload human consciousness onto a computer system. One's consciousness could exist forever in a virtual environment. Our course says, for a futurist like Ray, there would be heaven, a virtual heaven. Once you upload the brain onto the internet and log on to the virtual world, your body can be left to decompose while your virtual self can play games for as long as you wish. To make this possible, computer hardware would initially be installed in the brain. Over time, more hardware would be added until the person's entire brain functions were handled by artificial devices. Eventually, the human body would not be needed for the mind to survive, and ultimately, their consciousness could be transferred to a computer. Another possibility for mind-to-computer uploading is to perform a detailed scan of an individual's original brain. Then the entire structure would be simulated in a computer. However, the level of detail needed to achieve emulating awareness is still being researched. If it does happen, people who have uploaded their mind could then be considered immortal, unless, of course, the machines that maintain them are destroyed. While some scientists state that radical life extension is achievable, there are currently no international or national programs focused on it. However, in 2012, pro-immortality political parties were launched in Russia, the United States, Israel, and the Netherlands. They provide political support to radical life extension research and technologies with the ultimate goal of giving citizens access to these technologies. One might think 
that preventing humans from dying using any means possible is not just ethical but a moral imperative. However, the quest for immortality in today's world is not without controversy. The possibility of immortality has raised a host of medical, philosophical, religious, and ethical issues. Most scientists agree that life extension technology will likely be very expensive when first developed. Therefore, only a handful of wealthy elites will be able to afford it. From this, the social disparities between the rich and poor could become even greater. The wealthy few who could afford the technology would have significantly longer lives and more opportunities to gain greater wealth and power. But some experts argue that even if only the rich would have access to life extension technology, it is not a good reason to ban it. That's because, first of all, denying life treatments to the rich will not help save the poor. Second, new technologies are often expensive at first, but they will become cheaper and more widely available as time goes by. Therefore, even if these technologies are only available to the rich at first, it might be the only way for the poor to have access to them down the line. A short-term injustice may be necessary to move on to a position where greater justice can be done. Another argument is regarding the quantity of life versus the quality of life. Those in favor of life extension believe it's ethical for two simple reasons. The first is that if something is good, then more of it is better than less of it. The second is that if we want the ends, we should also want the means. Their argument begins by stating that life is good, and continuing to experience the benefits of life requires physical survival. Dead people can no longer enjoy the goodness of living life. This is why most people dread even the thought of dying. Furthermore, we try every means possible to save lives. Police officers, firefighters, and doctors are all highly respectable professions because they play a critical role in saving lives. People can sometimes accept the abstract idea of dying, but it's normally in the more distant future. When someone is faced with an immediate decision to live or die, they seldom want to reject rescue operations and emergency treatments, for example. A saved life will live to see another day. Life extension is no different. A person whose life is extended will also live to see another day, and they will continue to live longer than the day they would have otherwise died on without life extension. The day they will die is an unspecified day in the future. Most likely, that person will be as reluctant to die then as they would now. Life extension is about saving lives. Therefore, it should be given the same priority that rescue operations and emergency treatments have. Some people, however, take a different view. Opponents of life extension do agree that life is good, but in a different way. They claim that social continuity rather than biological survival makes human life worth living. Simply existing is not good enough. People need communities, traditions, and cultures to prosper. And all of these, in their turn, need structural stability and historical progression to survive. This can only be produced by current generations passing on their ways 
to the generation that comes directly after them. If people live for a thousand years, they will not hand down their position and community to their children. This will interrupt traditions and their connectedness between family members. This could lead to the demise of society as we know it. Another factor is the effect mortality has on our interest and engagement with life. Being mortal makes us treasure and appreciate everything that life brings. Spending our time doing things in life contributes to our sense of accomplishment and meaningfulness. Technology that slows aging would disrupt nature, time, and maturity. If we interfere with the natural process of aging, the value we place on life would be lost. Perhaps aging and a limited lifespan give us a sense of meaning to life that we might not have otherwise. There is a high possibility that humans might not fully appreciate life if we never aged or lived a thousand years. Do you agree? Would we still have a sense of urgency in life? Would we still appreciate life itself? Let's treasure every moment. Life is precious. Seize the day. While it may be difficult to imagine living for 200 or even 1,000 years, there is no doubt that our lives would be drastically different, and our views on the importance of life may very well change. Let's quickly review what we learned today. First, we discussed the search for eternal life. Second, we went into prospects for human immortality. And third, we looked at the debate about technological immortality. The quest for immortality is one humans have been trying to achieve for millennia. Perhaps we will succeed where our predecessors had failed, or perhaps we will follow in their footsteps and remain mortal after all. Whatever the outcome, let us never forget Life is precious. Treasure it. All right, that's it for today's class. I hope you enjoyed it. See you.